Today we're going to be talking about a new set of features called Ma Ma Mail Manager, pardon me, um, which is a set of features for SES. We're going to dive into those features and whatnot, but why don't I first uh, do some quick introductions. I'm Zip. I'm a solutions architect on the uh, messaging specialization team here. So I work with customers who want to use uh, services like SES and uh, help them uh, envision those architectures and uh, make sure that uh, they're going to be sending at the scale they want uh, to uh, recipients uh, who want to receive their email, etc. So that's, uh, that's my role here today, and I'm going to be playing a little bit of the MC uh, and guiding us through this discussion. And I've got with me uh, Principal PM uh, Toby. You want to just tell us a little bit about you? Yep. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, I'm one of the, the senior product leads for SES, and I'm looking after the the mail manager feature set. So I'll be uh, sort of presenting some of the material today and uh, chatting with Zip and Shishan about how it all works. Great. And speaking of Shishan, I've got uh, Shishan is going to be helping us with uh, demos and talking through use cases and workflows. Shishan, a little bit about you, please. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Shishan Kumaya. I'm a solutions architect uh, covering the enterprise sector. I've been supporting SES customer for over six years now. So happy to be here to walk you through the new set of features for your manager. Thank you. Great. Okay. So I am going to see if I can figure out how to turn off my video because my PowerPoint screen is over here and I'm going to be looking off to the other side. Um, but while I uh, try to do that, let's talk a little bit about uh, what it is we're going to try to cover today. We've got um, a information packed uh, webinar for you. Of course, we have a lot of resources that are available to you uh, on the website and um, in the AWS console if you're already an AWS customer. Uh, if not, uh, it's fairly easy to become one. Um, so we'll give you access to some resources afterwards. We've got blog posts that talk about some of these use cases and we'll continue to write about new use cases as they come up with customers. So today we're going to introduce you to the concept of a uh, mail manager. And we're going to cover those key features and some of those key benefits. As I said, we're going to take you through um, take you four different use cases uh, that uh, are indicative of the types of capabilities that the services provide. And uh, we're going to um, uh, talk about those. We're going to bring you into the uh, screenshots of the AWS console. And Shesan and I are going to show you how we would configure some of these workflows uh, so you can see how easy it is and how comprehensive it is. And then we're going to go ahead and answer questions that might come up from the audience and we'll wrap it up. So with that, then why don't we just go ahead and jump right on into the content. Um, we were talking as the webinar began with Toby a little bit about SES and I think uh, SES is a very well known service from AWS. Uh, it's a very mature service. It's been around for, I think, over a decade. Yeah. And um, when, when people think of SES, uh, the vast majority of the use cases are on outbound mail. So your package has been delivered, you've got an appointment with your doctor, uh, here's a great um, uh, uh, sale that's going on for a product that you're interested in, et cetera. Those are all uh, outbound emails. And of, of course, there is an inbound email capability with SES. Um, and we can receive email. We do have a, a large number of customers that are receiving that email. And from those customers' feature requests, SES's mail manager uh, set of features was born. Because today, if we look at SES and the receiving capabilities, um, they're a little bit on the limited side in terms of their flexibility. And customers would, would tell us uh, often, geez, we'd like to do these types of applications to take mail in and maybe process and then send mail out, et cetera. And so uh, while we can do a little bit about that, and I've, I talk to customers about this almost every day, I had several conversations yesterday about the email receiving, the ability to bring more flexibility and more capabilities into those e inbound mail flows and eventually outbound mail flows also is something that uh, Toby's team has been working on. Toby, you talked to a lot of customers about their current email infrastructure. Can you tell us a little bit about the concept of what you saw and what you built, please? Absolutely. So um, the, the, the thing that we kept hearing from customers was, you know, there's a lot of mail that goes on. I don't really know about all of it. 
I know generally that there's things happening. I know there's applications that have been set up. I know there's internal mail relays. I know there's postfix servers. I know any number of things that are using mail services, and I only have control and visibility over some of it. Most often, that's your inboxes. Um, you know, those are pretty well understood. They're very visible. Everybody has one. Um, but a lot of other services may not be, you know, designed to enable a person to get a, a window and compose a message and send it to another person. Uh, we, we call that person to person mail, and that's the inbox use case. But there's an awful lot of application to person mail or even application to application mail. Um, and that's a lot more randomized. There's all sorts of different ways people set these things up. Uh, they'll set up dedicated applications, dedicated servers. They'll have contracts with third party providers. Um, and, and that is where it becomes more complex. Uh, and, you know, the, the, the challenge there is, you know, with the best will in the world, that complexity and that lack of visibility introduces risk. Um, and so the idea with Mail Manager was, okay, what can we do to give customers an easy way to gain control over all of this mail? Uh, bring it under one set of, of management tools, one set of reporting, uh, and then add some additional features either natively from, from AWS or through third parties that we know customers are already interested in, they're already using. Um, and that was, that was really the genesis. What, you know, we were good at this for our own mail. We were really good at sending a trillion messages or more a year. Um, but the tooling required to make that a successful and stable and secure business could also be applied to mail that didn't originate from our own API. Great. Yeah. So if we um, double click here a little bit on, on some of the key benefits uh, and the key capabilities here, can you talk to us a little bit about what you'd think of as like maybe the four key areas that mail manager is going to help our customers with? Absolutely. So the, the first one is, is I think the most important, which is simplification. Um, it, it's, it's very surprising to a lot of customers when they start looking into it, just how much mail is out there and how many different ways it's handled. Uh, and, and simply gaining visibility over that teaches you an awful lot. Uh, and, and that can be, in certain cases, enough of a goal in and of itself to justify the work. Um, just just that, that awareness is hugely important. Uh, but once you have that awareness, it becomes a lot easier to decide you know, where your weakest points are and therefore where to focus your efforts on improvement. And that's, that's really the idea of how do we fortify this infrastructure so that it's more resilient, it's more reliable, and it introduces less or no risk into what we do. Um, so from there, the, the, the standard controls that most customers care about are really to do with data leakage, with compliance and retention, uh, you know, ensuring that, for example, if it's a sensitive internal document, there is no way to send it to an external recipient. Um, how, how, do we do, how do we ensure that that can't be done without really significant malicious intent? Um, and for, for uh, retention purposes, more and more companies are either operating in industries that have regulatory burdens or in, in territories and geographies that bring with them national laws uh, that define retention standards. And those, those are, you know, long ago, it used to be sort of 90 to 180 days, and now it's routinely five, seven, 10 years or indefinite retention for certain types of email records. And, you know, again, we're good at that for certain types of email, the most visible part, but we're not always so good at it for a lot of these, these application to person or application to application mail flows. Uh, and, and so Mail Manager really focused heavily on how to enable that kind of retention use case um, easily and inexpensively for any of the mail that's flowing in your business. So that's great. Thank you. So the core here is we're going to centralize all these uh, different applications and different use cases um, inside of the AWS services. It's going to feel very uh, familiar mm -hmm. to anyone that's ever set up any AWS service, whether that's SES or if you set up a VPC we're following a lot of the same concepts. We're following a lot of the same um, uh, methods and process. We're just doing it for your email infrastructure. So bringing your whole email infrastructure under one roof to make it easy to make some changes. So let's, uh, let's dive in a little bit more deep here. So uh, here's sort of a block diagram. Um, and this is a block diagram of Mail Manager. You wanna give us a little bit of a high level overview? Yep. So the, the basic idea here is we, the first thing we need to do is have one place where mail can be uh, inserted onto the network. 
um, whether you're sending it, whether you're receiving it. Again, we're, we're used to having an external domain name where, where somebody can, an external sender can send mail to you. Uh, but the mail relay function, where all your internal applications need to send mail and insert it into the network themselves, though that's really where a lot of the volume that's sort of unknown or at least poorly understood, uh, that, that's the, that needs to go as well. So the first thing is to have a single place where mail can be sent and received. Um, we call that an ingress endpoint. We'll talk a little bit more about how that works in a minute. Um, but from there, assuming we, we accept the mail, it's legitimate, we know we want to pr process it further, then there's the question of routing. Where do we want it to go? Where do we want to prevent it from going? Uh, and do we want to do things to it along the way? Make a copy of it, store it somewhere, deliver it to an additional recipient, those sorts of functions. And those are all routing behaviors. And, um, you know, we, again, we want to make it very simple to understand what rules you have uh, and very efficient to enable or disable rules depending on the specific use case for your, for your mail. Finally, there are overarching security concerns. You know, am I sending sensitive documents, you know, inadvertently, but to the wrong recipients? Am I, uh, you know, preserving PII or, or financial information in some way, which I shouldn't be before an email is sent out the door? Um, so we want to enforce those kinds of content controls for email security. Again, is a, is a multi-layered approach. Like any other security system, there's not a single point of failure. There are uh, always benefits to having layered approaches in these controls. Uh, and then finally, when we've checked all those boxes, delivery. And we want to ensure that delivery happens with high confidence, high reliability, no matter where you are in the world. And again, that takes advantage of that, that, that classic SES capability of sending a trillion plus messages a year and delivering you know, well over 99.5% of them to any recipient under any content conditions. Uh, and that's, that's, that's really the goals of, of bringing the classic infrastructure to bear for mail management. That's great, thank you. So let's uh, double click here a little bit and let's uh, discuss, uh, you had uh, introduced the concept of an ingress endpoint. Right? Indeed. So, so an ingress endpoint is, is where the action starts. So uh, in order to insert mail into a controlled delivery path, we start with this ingress endpoint. And that is the mechanism where you configure your application, your mailbox system, your third party service, um, to connect to this as an SMTP connection. This is your classic mail protocol. Um, we support both um, open and authenticated connections to ingress endpoints, depending on the particulars of your needs. Um, you can verify external domains and configure their MX records, for those of you who've played with DNS before, um, to point to an ingress endpoint so that somebody sending mail from the, an external uh, point of origin can deliver it to whichever domain you manage and, and wish to use. Um, so the ingress endpoint is, is you, you know, they're the sort of the first visible part of the mail manager infrastructure. And what sets the ingress endpoint uh, uh, apart from what we used to do with SES and, and still do actually with the inbound rules is the ingress endpoint is yours, right? It's tied to your account. You can That's configure right. it the way you want to. And it acts a little bit like a, almost like an email firewall, doesn't it? Like it's almost like do, your yeah. gatekeeper, so we, yeah? We have this notion of traffic policies. Um, and, and if you think of, um, oh gosh, you think of a, a traffic policeman who's either allowing a car in or, or telling it to go away based on whatever conditions, um, the traffic policy does something similar. So we can look at parameters in the message of cells. We can look at, at, at quality or reputation indicators uh, about the, uh, or from the, the, the sending IP that's originating or attempting to deliver the message to us. Uh, or we can simply have blanket rules that say, this ingress endpoint is only allowed to accept mail submitted from this, you know, on-premise server in my network. Fine, no yep. problem. Um, and that that is the the, the first point of, of control over whether or not we even want to process the message further. And we'll dive into that with Shaysan a little bit, and we'll show how we configure, and uh, we'll show how the the traffic policy and rules work to help screen mail and, mm -hmm. and help sort of the beginning, the the ingress part of it. So once the mail is uh, is received, so we decided we want to receive, you know, whatever mail is coming in, um, uh, then what happens? Right. So once we've accepted a message, it's then handed off to a rules engine, which has a rule set. And the rules engine is really what does, determines the routing behaviors and the optional actions that are performed on the message once it's been accepted. Um, so, for example, um, we might say that, that uh, mail destined to uh, a public figure, like our CEO's mailbox, 
we might actually not just deliver it to the mailbox. We might reroute it so that it can be inspected by a support team or it can be evaluated for security threats or it can be classified in some other way because of the volume and the sensitivity of that material. Um, doesn't change what the senders have to do, um, but it gives us options to invoke additional protections and controls uh, along the way. We also have the option of invoking um, add-ons. So this is where we bring third-party expertise to bear in Mail Manager. Uh, you know, Amazon doesn't want to build high-level email security applications, but there are some great vendors out there. And we were really proud to launch Mail Manager with three vendors we've been working with in SES already. Um, and they offer their capabilities as options and the customer can choose to invoke them uh, you know, as part of the mail processing, either at the traffic policy or within the rules engine, depending on the nature of, of the protection itself. And we'll show you how that works in a minute. Um, we also have a series of options within, uh, you know, our own control. So we can write a message to S3. You know, if, if you're using SES receiving today, you may already be taking advantage of that feature to store mail. Uh, once it's written to S3, you can do the whole universe of AWS actions against it. You can invoke lambdas, you can uh, copy it to other locations, you can drop it into queues, whatever you want to do. Uh, we have an archiving feature, and that's really essential for that retention use case I was talking about before. You may choose to archive messages uh, that, that I send to zip in one archive. Um, you may choose to receive uh, archive messages that go to your help at public alias into a different archive. You have all sorts of flexibility to choose how to do that. Um, and then finally, there are delivery options. You may or may not want to send messages on to their, their intended recipients. You may cho choose to rewrite it to a different recipient. Uh, you might deliver it to a different destination domain entirely, or you might just release it for onward, onward delivery, at, you know, assuming it's passed all the other controls along the way. Uh, and ultimately, that's that, that delivery to, uh, you know, to the internet or to the internal recipient, uh, depending on the nature of the message. Great, and then we'll round it out. It's not just uh, mail that comes in for zip, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, it's not always about me. Uh, uh, <laughs> you talked a little bit more uh, earlier about uh, systems that send email, et cetera. Could you expand Absolutely. a little bit upon that? Absolutely. So a lot of the mail that we deal with is internal to internal. Um, you know, you might have um, you know HR tools that your manager uses to you know, deliver you quarterly updates on performance, or you might be able to submit feedback to your, you know, about your colleagues, or you might have expense reimbursement tools, or any number of other standard applications that interact with you or with other applications strictly within the, the envelope of your own organization. Uh, and in those scenarios, you know, there's a basic expectation that th that mail can't be sent externally, or at least it shouldn't be. You may want to detect attempts if there's a misconfigured application somewhere. Um, but you still want to otherwise apply all the same controls. So you bring all that mail through Mail Manager the same way you do, you know, mail that originates from external senders. And this is where we gain the benefit of standard controls, no matter what the point of origin of the message is, no matter what its destination is. Uh, and that that's what allows you to, to make sense out of that rather complicated sort of legacy design and uh, a mixture of you know, uh, shadow IT and on-prem tools and hybrid and cloud tools and everything else that's probably using mail one way or another inside your business. Um, and Mail Manager allows you to, to focus on that, gain control over it, and then start tracking it to decide how to make it better. So essentially, basically, kind of no matter where the mail is coming from, no matter where the mail is destined to, we can bring all of that traffic into Mail Manager. We can perform different actions based on different rules, different uh, criteria, and, and centralize it all sort of in one place so it's highly visible, audible, et cetera, right? That's exactly right. That's a great summary. Okay, great, great. Um, let's go ahead uh, and uh, look a little bit. You've covered this a little bit, but uh, so we've got um, mail comes into an ingress endpoint, mm -hmm. right? either open or authenticated. We talked a little bit about that. And then the traffic policy is applied, and that's how we decide whether or not we want the mail. And then um, if we want the mail, because it, re it meets criteria, and Shaysan and I are going to dive deeply into that, um, then it goes into the rule set. And at, at that rule set, uh, we decide what the actions are going to be, right? 
Uh, yep. we'll, we're going to go through that a little bit uh, now. Uh, so I'm going to thank you very much. We're going to be back to you okay. as, uh, as our product lead. We're going to be back to you, but uh, Shaysan and I are going to actually go here into um, the console. And we've taken screenshots of the console. It's, uh, we find it's a little bit better to, to do these types of demonstrations, but you can go hands-on if you have access to an AWS account, and we would encourage you to do that. That's going to be part of our call to action later. Um, but what we're showing here is... Um, We've, we've taken a very uh, common approach with some of the newer uh, getting started uh, guided wizard tools uh, in SES with uh, the get started um, uh, guide for uh, mail managers. So right inside of the console, uh, we're gonna guide you through what it is you're trying to do. We're gonna take you through the different steps. And I think you'll find that it's, uh, it's, it's quite easy and it's very intuitive. Um, we're gonna dive beyond that actually, and we're gonna talk about four different use cases, and we're gonna show you how we would configure for those four use cases. And we're gonna talk about what the different pieces of Mail Manager, the different components are doing, why they're doing it, and what we'd expect to achieve with that. So without further ado, let's uh, talk a little bit, Shaysan, about how we've created a bunch of emails for our demonstration, because uh, we know smoke and mirrors. Uh, how, are, how are we doing this? Yes, um, thank you, Zip. So uh, for the purpose of this particular demonstration and to make it easy for our audiences, we've tried to create this simple SMTP script to send an email to, the, to a particular recipient as highlighted in the script. So, so just uh, to take it back a little bit, this script can be copied by the audience to your test environment. So we make it so simple that you can take it to your environment and also test out mail manager features and functionality. So the SMTP server here is the ingress endpoint. We connected to the endpoint on port 25. Toby has already mentioned ingress endpoint, and we supplied the sender and recipient addresses. So on the terminal, you can see the simple command which you can use to send the email to the recipient. So on the next slide, we'll be talking about uh, the flow of the message when the email comes into the ingress endpoint, what applies and what rules um, are applied on it. So uh, on this particular screen, you can see that the first, first action right there is the ingress endpoint URL. <laughs> when email comes in via the ingress endpoint, two things applied, the traffic policy, and the rule set. So what are traffic policy? Toby earlier mentioned and explained to us that traffic policy is like the email gateway. Yep. It allows or deny messages that are coming into your ingress endpoint based on particular conditions. We'll be looking at what those conditions are. Uh, and sec thirdly is the rule set. The rule set are actions and conditions that should be applied on certain messages that comes into your uh, endpoint. So we have the firewall, like a gateway, which is a traffic policy, and we have the actions that will be taken on those messages. So let's dive into a very common use case, and that would be email security. Toby's mentioned it a couple of times uh, prior. And let's look at how we've configured a traffic policy to act as the sort of the first gateway into, uh, you know, to allow mail in. So can you tell us a little bit about what we've done in this traffic policy? In this particular screenshot, the first action that we have on the traffic policy right here is to allow every messages that is coming in irrespective of the message size. Secondly, we have the policy statement. The policy statement is denying messages based on certain criteria. And as you can see on this on the screenshot right here, we can block messages based on abusive uh, mail intelligence. We can block us uh, uh, email uh, the sender based on the sender IP address range. In this case, we are dropping all messages that are coming in from North Korea. The third uh, the nice statement is based on the TLS protocol version. Uh, as an organization, we don't want to receive any messages from a sender with TLS less than uh, 1.2. If we have noticed a particular recipient in the organization that re received lots of spam messages, uh, we've also denied that um, recipient from receiving email. 
And the last one is the spam house uh, domain block list. So based on the spam house uh, domain uh, block list and functionality, which we will see uh, when we get to the add-ons, we want to deny those messages from coming into the organization. Great. So if if mail arrives and it meets all this criteria, so in other words, we're not dropping the mail. We want the mail, right? Which is going to be probably the vast majority of the mail, but this is our first screen. We go from the traffic policy to a rule set, and the rule set does what, please? So if an email is able to come in, uh, it's uh, satisfied all the criteria of the traffic policy, the email gets to the organization and the rule set applies. Uh, in this particular uh, screenshot or in this particular example, uh, we are applying the false rule set, which states rule set routing. And the condition for this particular rule set is that every message is coming in to our organization, example.com. These are the actions that should be applied. The actions are the third step. First action is to archive a copy of those emails. And the second action is to send the, those messages to SMTP relay. The SMTP relay talks, takes the messages to the final destination. It doesn't stop there, right? So um, as Toby and Zip has mentioned earlier, there are multiple actions that can be taken on certain messages. So actions can be daisy change, such as we can write a copy to an S3 bucket, we can you know, add some headers, we can deliver uh, those messages to the internet and you know, all those actions are there based on organization's policy or your use case. Use cases, you can you know, take multiple actions on uh, a specific email. I think that's a key there because we can we can add different actions to the same uh, message, right? So, and we'll talk a little bit about that in some of the use cases. I had a conversation yesterday with someone who wants to use Mail Manager, and they want to be able to archive the message, like we talked about. So, use the formal archiving feature, and but they also want to write the message to S3 because they might want to do some processing on that, and we'll describe a potential use case for that in just a few minutes. So. Um, this is the, that's the flow for email. Toby had mentioned uh, earlier, and we've talked a little bit about a couple of the email add-ons. And Toby, can you tell us a little bit about the concept behind these email add-ons, please? Absolutely. Uh, and Shasan showed uh, in, the, in the traffic policy an example with Abuse 6 mail intelligence. The, the idea here is there are some emails for which certain security controls make all the sense in the world. Uh, and there are other emails where maybe it's it's not as appropriate, right? If if you have a, you know an external mailbox that's receiving mail from external senders, uh, and that's a public address, it is entirely reasonable that you want to validate the reputation of the senders to that address uh, to determine whether or not they're likely abusers. Uh, and so we offer the ability to enable uh, in the in the traffic policy itself uh, options like the abusive mail intelligence, like Spam House. Uh, just to validate the reputation of the senders. Uh, and what's really nice about Mail Manager is you don't need to do any other technical work to enable this. Uh, you can go through, you can select the solution, you accept the terms because you, you, know, you choose to incur an additional cost to make use of these products, um, and they are instantly available. It becomes an option that you can choose in your, policy, in your, you know, your traffic policy statement. No further work is required. And for any message that, that traverses that ingress endpoint for which you know, the, the, the add-on is enabled, um, it'll be interrogated against that as an additional condition that you can then use to determine whether or not to accept the message. Um, so it's 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 easy as we can make it. You know, enable it with one click, configure it in your policy, done. No other provisioning, no API magic, no other, uh, you know, coding or other tools required to, to take advantage of these tools. And we envision a future in which add-ons have a whole range of capabilities. Um, so the, the idea here is not just traffic policies. We also have a relationship with, with Trend where we're looking at email attachments and we're scanning attachments for malware. And if you detect malware, you know, if you're in the email security business, maybe you're using it as a, um, uh, you know, a, a, as a, you know, a sandbox to capture all of this content for offline analysis. So you don't want to drop it at the traffic policy, but nor do you want to release it for further propagation. Um, so if it's classified as malware, great. 
put it somewhere else and your researchers can go to town on it at, at their convenience and without risk of actual infection to uh, the named recipients in the first place. Um, so add-ons is a way that we make the, 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 the mechanisms of a mail manager as extensible as possible. And we invite third-party tools to participate in the system and make their solutions available, you know, again, with that one-click activation and with, with the customers retaining full discretion over which emails to apply the tool to um, where it makes sense and without any unnecessary cost applying it to mails where, you know, it possibly doesn't make any sense at all. Great, so at, uh, at launch then uh, we've got the three add-ons, but you would expect, I don't want to lead you into roadmap land, but you'd expect other add-ons to become available, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, the, like I said, the, the three we started with, we already had great working relationships with uh, from, from SES. Um, so they were the three we invited to, to join us for launch. Um, but we, we do expect to have a, a regular drumbeat of, of additional third parties that are added into Mail Manager uh, on a fairly regular basis going forward. Great, thanks. So security is always job one here at AWS, and that's why we want to cover that first. But uh, email archiving uh, keeps turning up as a major customer uh, concern, request, need, et cetera. And so let's take you through email archiving. We've touched on it a couple of different times, but let's uh, double click on it and let's take you uh, into it. And Sheshan, can you explain to us what we're seeing here from this console screenshot? So for this particular use case, um, we want to archive HR concerns messages that are coming to our HR mailbox. So to create archive, um, the console has made it so much easy. It's just a very few clicks of the mouse and we can create an archive. So to have an archive created in your account, you know, provide the name of the archive, which is HR concern. You can have multiple archives in your accounts and you know, apply different uh, retention policies. So in this particular use case, we've used 18 month retention policy, that is step two. And you can encrypt your archive for security purposes. And we are you know, using um, a KMS key, a customer owned KMS key to archive, that means to encrypt this particular mm -hmm. archive. So the last step is just to click on create archive and you have your archive mailbox. Great, so for this use case that we're envisioning, HR emails that come into the HR uh, concern email address are gonna automatically be archived in the HR concerns archive, they're gonna be encrypted, and they're gonna be held for 18 months. But what happens if I wanna look at those emails? Oh, I'm sorry, this is, the, this is what happens, so. So to route messages that are coming to HR concerns at example.com to the HR concern archive storage, um, just like we've explain, explained earlier, um, for rules to apply, we have the rule condition and the rule action. So the first step in this uh, screenshot is the name of the rule, that is um, HR concern rule. And the second step is the rule condition, so here yeah, we said uh, to address equals to HR concerns at example.com. And the last um, step, which is the action that will be taken on those messages destined to HR concern at example.com is that all those email are archived in the HR archive storage. Great, you yeah, so, so you created the archive and I skipped this part. You created the archive, then you apply the rule so that the emails find their way into the archive. And then if I want to find a particular email in the archive, uh, the, the, that capability is built right into the SES console also, right? Absolutely. So for, for this particular use case, so um, now we have our HR archive storage and a personnel from the HR department is trying to search for a previous email that was sent to the HR department. So the first uh, search criteria here is the date range. You can search as far back as um, I think uh, 30 days, see? So in this particular use case, we search for the last 12 hours um, email. The next step is to click on the search button. Once you have your results, um, you can either directly download a single email to your, you know, to your system and analyze that message or view that email. Or you want to, you know, export a bunch of, you know, archive results into an S3 bucket for, for that analysis. 
which is this step four right there. Uh, but if I would just want to take a quick look, right? Somebody sent an email concern. I want to take a quick look at it. Then I can just click on it and I can click the view details, right? And I'll get, I'll get the message and I'll get all the information and the headers. And there was no message text on this message. Whoops. But uh, you can see that we're, we're just uh, quickly able to get right into and look at that message, which is nice. No third party tools, no, you know, futzing around. I can see the message. Simple and easy. Anyway. Great. Okay. Um, we've talked a little bit about uh, processing the mail, maybe archiving the mail, maybe doing some things with the mail, certainly screening whether we want the mail or not, but then we want to move the mail to, to the recipient email, right? So let's talk a little bit about the SMTP relay capability. So coupling together everything that we have discussed so far, talking about the um, traffic policy, route sets, SMTP relay, down to the recipient mailbox. So right here, the step one here is we have inbound messages that is destined to our ingress endpoint, which is the step two right there. So the ingress endpoint in this case is the open endpoint. What happens when every message gets to our ingress endpoint, those messages have a traffic policy applied to it. Traffic policies simply means that this message or a bunch of messages are allowed or denied based on what we have on the traffic policy. The fourth step right there is the rule set. The rule set are the actions and conditions. So the action that we have set previously is to archive a copy of those messages and send a copy simultaneously to the uh, destination or the recipient. So the fifth action, which is the SMTP, SMTP relay action within the rule set is the fifth action and the messages are delivered to the recipient. So uh, looking at the fifth action right there, the recipient in this case is the Amazon Workmail client. Um, your recipient can either be on any of the external service provider, such as Outlook, um, Microsoft 365, Google Workspace, Yahoo, or AOL. So you can have your recipient in any of those uh, email service provider. Uh, but in this particular use case, we are using um, Amazon Workmail. Great, yeah, and Workmail, uh, it, it's actually a great service for inbound, uh, for inboxing. We use it an awful lot of times for demos and testing and uh, very discreet uh, use cases. So let's just walk through this uh, in context of our other use cases. So let's take our HR uh, complaints. So an email, so an employee writes an HR complaint and sends that email to the complaint address that comes in through the, uh, through the ingress endpoint Right, we, we know we want to receive that mail. It, it meets all the criteria of mail we want to receive. That mail goes to the rule set. The rule set said, uh, make an archive of it, right? So put it in the right. HR concerns archive. So it went into the archive. So it's now being, it's encrypted and it's being stored for 18 months. And then it flows out through the SMTP relay to whoever's monitoring that mailbox and they can bring up that mail in their client. They can read the mail, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, Absolutely. We're not impeding. We're not impeding the mail finding its way to the actual person that needs to look at that complaint. We're enhancing it by automatically storing it as an archive and then passing it along to to that person. Great. Okay. Um, and that's the same for all these all these different use cases and the ability to add those multiple actions. I think uh, gives a lot of uh, uh, flexibility and I think we're going to see some very creative use cases. Um, Routing, processing, and automating is something that we can do once we've uh, passed the email in. And um, we're a little bit short on time, and so I'm going to sort of just uh, hy hypothesize here, right? So, you know, we already know we can bring mail in. We already know that we can decide what we're going to do with that mail, and we've talked about some of the different actions. And one of those actions is we could write the mail to S3. Well, once I write the mail to S3, then... I could have a Lambda uh, function. So uh, the write to S3 can cause a trigger, the Lambda can get the mail, and we can do really interesting things with the mail. So we could, in this example, we could send the mail, excuse me, we, we can send that message to um, a large language model in Bedrock, <clears throat> and we can uh, figure out what that mail is about, and we can do something uh, specific with that mail, maybe even turn around and, and generate a reply 
based on what the mail is about. So these types of applications uh, now become very readily available for folks to build with this core infrastructure. So <clears throat> with that, what I want to do is um, we're starting to wrap up here. I, I want to invite Toby to talk a little bit about uh, what your call to action would be. If, if you find these capabilities interesting and exciting and you think that they might apply to your organization, Toby, what, what should be their what should be their steps? Absolutely. Thanks. Thanks. Ed. I, and I've been watching the Q and a and trying to pick up on a couple of the questions. Um, but the, the, the main thing that we're, we're encouraging customers to start with is really getting visibility into the emails that you haven't really thought about in great detail up till now. You know, as I said, at the beginning, we all know about our inboxes. We all know about the high profile, uh, email activity. There's an awful lot of additional email and even, you know, small and mid-sized businesses um, that, that could create a, an exposure either for lack of compliance or for data leakage or um, simply for shadow IT type activities that are, that are, you know, running afoul of your, of your governance and policies. So the first thing we recommend people do is go in and just look, you know, and, and, and the, go the goal is not pointing fingers. The goal is awareness. You know, and encouraging, uh, you know, a, a uniform method of, of uh, more productive thought about how to make use of this resource, which is, you know, a business critical uh, process. There's no question, right? Email can contain written records that have legal standing. It can contain personal information about customers or sensitive, you know, uh, circumstances. And all of that creates risk, which requires some sort of positive control for management. Um, once you have a sense of that, you may say, okay, you know what, this is clearly the, the most uh, critical priority. Um, let's get this under control so that we can, you know, demonstrate, you know, uh, solid efforts to improve. Um, so you're going to pick one of those uh, errant mail flows to onboard to mail manager, start moving it through, gain access to traffic policies, gain access to rule sets, invoke archiving, whatever it is you need to do to bring some improved governance uh, and, and control over those email flows. And in so doing, you'll learn how to use the tool, which of course makes it that much easier because those same skills will apply to every other mail flow you onboard going forward. Um, once you've set that up, configure it, run it, learn to use it, you know, play with, play with metrics, play with permissions, um, you know, manage who, who has responsibility in these newly improved email uh, workflows inside your organization. Um, and after that, onboarding more of them becomes uh, almost no incremental work at all. Uh, you've set up your ingress endpoints, you've got your authentication going, um, you're dealing with external uh, DNS incoming mail. Uh, all of that becomes very standard. And you've now what you've got is one place where all your, all your mail exists. And then you can choose what to expose to other tools, other processes, whenever you like. You know, there's no further network engineering required, for example, to, uh, you know, write mail to S3 and invoke your own custom Lambda um, or to make use of an add on that we just announced tomorrow or whatever process it might be. You no longer need to play with your network. You no, no longer need to change your DNS um, because the mail is already all in one place. And we give you the tooling to turn on and turn off any of those extra features at your discretion. Great. Yeah, it sounds uh, pretty reasonable. Um... We've got some questions and answers, and I know that uh, Jesse is uh, is uh, at the ready and um, I'm going to take a look here at my second screen. Um, and while we do that, also, I'm going to go ahead and move to uh, here. We've got a couple of QR codes where you can uh, easily scan and get access to the launch announcement, the documentation uh, and our mess blog, which was my typo. Sorry. It's not a messy blog. It's a messaging blog. <laughs> so, Jesse, do we have some uh, customer questions? Uh, I think we answered most of the questions. I, I think a lot of the questions seem to be uh, focused on, like, the, the roadmap in terms of, like, what sort of uh, integration points will be possible with outbound sending for customers mm -hmm. sending outbound mail wanting to archive or or do security scanning on those messages. Um, Toby, I, I, I see that you did provide an initial answer to that. Do you want to elaborate on that? Yeah, I, I'll elaborate on that one specifically only because um, you know, there's an awful lot of outbound customers already. We, we do intend to make outbound natively available through Mail Manager. Um, uh, there are certainly a number of customers who want to use the archiving feature specifically, and you'll be able to do that for only the incremental cost of the archive itself. 
Um, but if you do want to start applying, you know, flexible controls from the rule set, from add-ons, from all the other mail manager features to your outbound workload, you'll also be able to run the entirety of your outbound mail through mail manager and then apply all the same filters and conditions and actions that we've shown you today to those messages, uh, either in batch or in a very targeted fashion. Um, so that is coming, um, but it's uh, it's not yet part of the product. I would expect that we'll have announcements about that uh, later this year. Okay, and I did I did see a number of uh, questions um, specifically related to outbound sending. Um, um, so a lot of those questions can be answered uh, by AWS support. So I'd encourage people to open a support case, um, and if uh, you have an account team, all customers should have an account team. Um, it, uh, get in contact with your account manager um, and if you, a solutions architect or technical account manager, um, uh, ask those questions. If, if you're experiencing any challenges or if, you're, if your use case isn't, isn't being reflected in the product, please, please submit that feedback so that we can get the, the, the necessary product um, feature requests um, logged um, so that we can start uh, thinking about uh, how we can uh, meet your objectives. Toby, anything you want to add to that from a product perspective? Um, no, I, I, I did see there were a couple of, like you said, a couple of support inquiries. Um, we, obviously, we want to make sure that those get addressed as quickly as possible and the most efficient way will be with, with your support representatives on the premium support team. Um, so certainly we would encourage you to record those tickets there. Okay. Well, we're going to give everybody back a few minutes of valuable time, but uh, before I do that, I want to thank my uh, co-presenters and everybody behind the scenes that has helped uh, make this happen. And I want to encourage you to um, subscribe to the messaging, not the mess, but the messaging and targeting blog which is where we publish uh, all of the blog posts around um, SES. There's been a flurry of um, mail manager blog posts that I think represent some very interesting use cases. There'll be some more. Um, and uh, I would uh, ask you if uh, you enjoyed this, uh, let us know. We're going to be bringing you a webinar uh, once monthly. Um, I know that there were a lot of questions earlier about email deliverability, so it, uh, that's a uh, Part of, uh, part of SES that uh, everybody's always interested in. It seems like we always get new customers that have uh, new questions about deliverability. So I think we'll probably round back on deliverability topics um, maybe in our next webinar to make sure we can cover those. But again, if you have questions through support or um, uh, the other means that are available to you. So without further ado, I want to thank everybody. I want to wish everybody a really, really nice uh, summer here in the Northern Hemisphere. And uh, take care. Thanks very much. Thanks, everyone.